then we saw you again at the Phoenix, so you've been pretty busy. What's your relationship with the idea of being on the road? Do you actually enjoy sort of playing gigs every night, sort of flying everywhere, airports, all this routine, being on the road? Well, I've always had a massive appetite for life and always been difficult for me to choose because I want to do 900 things every day and I can only do about six. <laughs> so um, I love touring, but you know, it's a balanced thing because the thing when you're touring, you can't uh, record new songs and also you can't be with your family and friends. So you just have to balance between work, you know, and but I love playing live and, and that's where I come from. I've been playing live since I was 11 and, and uh, I look at myself more as a live person than a studio person. But uh, the studio thing though has, has uh, progressed, you know. Traveling is fun, but it's like, a, it's like you know, if you, if you live in a suitcase, you can go mad after a while. So you're playing for 40,000 people and now uh, here in Brazil you're playing in a smaller venue. What's your relationship with the crowd regarding these sort of things? I do, I do you rather play in a bigger venue, smaller venue to make it more intimate? I like all different situations. I like to change, you know. I like to sing uh, for one person and I like to sing with string quartet in a wooden church and I like to sing, make techno music for 90,000 people and, and everything between and, and I love challenges, you know, and try different things. It's only boring when you just do the same thing over and over and over again, that's terrible. So I quite like uh, the changes. I was reading an interview that was published here in Brazil that you did with the International Press Syndicate and you mentioned something that um, maybe most of the artists feel like this but don't talk about that. It's the relationship between the artist and the fan. The guy has sort of follows you around asking for the autograph and you said that you don't like this kind of approach, the autograph thing or this kind of... Can you yeah. explain it? Well, I come from a country where individualism is our religion. You know, we don't even believe in God or Jesus or Buddha or Allah or whatever these, these guys are called, you know? And I mean, the United Nations asked to the survey all over the world, and, and Icelandic people were the only nation who, when they were asked, what do you believe in, they said, myself, you know? And, and if, if I get into trouble, who's gonna sort me out? Myself, you know? And, and, and for, uh, I mean, we never had autographs in Iceland. I mean, it would be just stupid, because you see uh, these people in the supermarket every day anyway, it's such a small society. And, and, and uh, for me, what irritates me about autographs is people are humiliating themselves in front of me. And, and I think it's terrible. You know, I make music, but okay, you know. And I come from a family of, of um, electricians and bricklayers and very hardworking people. And for me, music is the same thing, you know. And, and uh, there is soul in everything, you know. There is spirituality in everything. It doesn't live... And, 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 and uh, it, it isn't in, in somebody who holds a microphone, you know, just because I hold, you know, you hold a microphone. Yeah, that's right. I, and I <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's just stupid, you know, and, and, and of course, if, I mean, we are all different. If it makes a person next to me happy, if I do like this, this moment, look, it takes me about three seconds. If the person goes, <gasps> and runs home and is very happy, I'm like, okay, we all got our different kicks in life, you know? But for, for me, it's just, um, it don't feel right. Yeah. It's not because I, I don't have the time. It's just, I want people to be equal to me, you know, human, you know? I'm very lucky because I've been doing this since I was 11. My first record came out as I was 11. So it isn't like a big shock, like one minute, I'm nobody, next minute, everybody knows me. So I've had a very natural progress. And I, my job is to be emotional, if you want. But there are a lot of people who have got jobs like that. You've got nurses and doctors, you've got um, psychologists, <laughs> teachers. I mean, a teacher with, say, six-year-old children, if they are not emotional in their work, they, they will not be very good teachers, you know. and and. Um, I think most, very many, I mean interviews for example, if, you, if you're going to say, I'm not going to be emotional, you're not going to take very good <laughs> interviews, are you? <laughs> 
but but when I when I'm singing on stage and there's a lot of people there, it's not only my work. There's a lot of people's work, and and I my face becomes the symbol of that emotion that was uh, that was uh, expressed that evening. But it's a lot of people's work, and 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 because I've been doing this since I was 11, I look at the cover of a magazine. That is not. There's two different things, you know, me and the personal life and, and the private Björk and Björk in her job. And, and, and it, it is quite clear to me. And, and when people come to me and, and want the private Björk, they have to understand it's not the same person, you know. It's not that I'm a schizophrenic, yeah, but, but it's like if you go to a restaurant and you see a, a, a surgeon who operates, you know, a doctor, and you go to, oh, hello, my heart is, can you fix it now? Like, it's like, you can't do that. He's just yeah. having a meal with his wife, and and they can't say, oh, sing for me. You know, it's it's two different things, you know. And you said that it's not that you have, sort of, you're not influenced by anybody specifically. Is that right? Is that what you said? Because at the press conference here, you were talking about music, and it seems that you are influenced by loads of things, at least that you enjoy sort of discovering new things. What about the famous influences? I think, um, I think it is very important. I mean, I'm influenced by everything, by books, by the weather, by uh, the water, by uh, my shoes. You know, if they're comfortable or not, you know, and everything. One of it is music. But I think it's very important with people who are dealing with making music that they are not only influenced by music. And I find it very sad when you find the record and it says on the record, this record was inspired by Miles Davis. It be because it's like making, if you make a film, you don't make a film about a film. You make a film about the real life. And, and you wouldn't sit down and write a book about the book. You know, it's like recycling. It, it lo misses the point. And, and music isn't brilliant unless it goes beyond the point of being music and becomes real life. And, and, and so I'm influenced by real life. And, and, and when people listen to my music and say, oh, I can see great influence from this artist in there, I read that and I say, okay. I didn't, I, I didn't succeed. But if people listen to my music and say, oh, this made me feel like this and that, and it really feels like this, that's right. It should be beyond style, be beyond influence. It should be about pure emotion and, and real life. Alternative show, let's put it this way, we keep on playing Sugar Cubes videos. I keep on playing, we play sometimes Sugar Cubes videos. And I was wondering, before the press, press conference started, I mean, I was wondering, what, what, who would be the first one to ask about the sugar cubes? And the first question was about the sugar cubes. Are you sort of still being asked about the band? Sort of, do you sort of like, get bored about answering these kind of questions? Um, yeah, I'll answer anything. I'm quite pleased people keep asking me if there are Eskimos on Iceland and, and if there's a volcano in my living room and sugar cubes and, and like all these things because that means I, can t I have to talk less about myself and my music because I... I um, uh, yeah, it's great. You can ask anything you want. I mean, as asking about anything we want, I mean, especially the music press, whenever we read something, an interview with you, it seems that they are always asking you non-musical things about sex, private life, all these kind of things. Do you think that this is some, some, some sort of invasion to your life? Do you agree with this way that especially the British music press works? Especially regarding you, whenever you read something with Bjork, there comes something about sex or something about that. Well, I... I don't know, I can talk about everything, but everybody can talk about everything. You know, I, I have, again, I have to say, because I've been doing this since I was 11, you can be very sure I will never tell you anything that I consider private. You know, uh, uh, there's a very, you know, because that's mine. But I can talk about everything, and, and I like that, you know. I don't mind. But, uh, um, yeah, but, but I think if people think... Um, A, a, a stranger that I have never met will can feel like he's close to me after he's heard a song with me, but he won't get closer to me by by talking about sex with me. You know, 
I, I don't know. I'll leave it to the press to, to analyze it. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much.